many things to say. But first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank you, the people who are with you, for caring enough about Tibet and the Tibetan people to be here. It really matters. And to the people of the world, whoever will see your documentary, there is one very important fact that I have tried throughout my adult life to convey to other people, that the struggle for freedom, first and foremost, is about right and wrong. It is not about winning and losing. I keep saying I hope I'm wrong, but as I see it, the Chinese will not willingly, voluntarily walk away from Tibet. And as I see it, for that very reason, time is running out for the Tibetan people. Every day, while we are sitting here, hoping and waiting for the Chinese to voluntarily walk away from Tibet, inside Tibet, there's more and more and more Chinese settlers moving in. And now, as you know, it's not just going to be bus loads, it will be train loads. And soon it will be too late before we reach the point of no return for Tibetans to achieve a Tibet for Tibetans. And to that extent, it is not only that time is running out for Tibetans to regain our lost freedom, to regain a homeland for ourselves, to regain what is our birthright. It is also running out for the people of India. I have, whenever I meet Indian friends, I try to tell them that today, as I see it, India has more at stake in Tibet's future than Tibetans. Although we are the younger of the two brothers, yet today Tibet is on the point of death. India will not, cannot disappear like Tibet. And I cannot see it as being in India's interest, the interest of the people of India to have a cancerous wound stretching 2,500 kilometers from Pakistan to Burma, forever bleeding into your economy. One third of India's defense budget is on the northern frontiers with Tibet. When Tibet was free, what did you need? The other third of India's defense budget is in the Kashmir Valley. But that also largely because China is aiding and abetting Pakistan's militarism. It is a truth which nobody has the courage to admit. People in power in the West know this, but China is behind Pakistan's nuclear program. And China is also behind North Korea's nuclear program. Otherwise, where would they have the confidence to say, oh, if necessary, we could pick up the phone and tell the North Koreans to change their minds? Who are the Chinese? So to that extent, Tibet is not just about Tibetans. It is about peace between India and China. To the extent that it is not, it cannot be in anybody's interest to have India and China together more than one third of humanity to be forever locked in this unwinnable arms race. However, today, politicians around the world, and I'm sorry to say, in the, even in the so-called free democracies, are so busy staring at their popularity charts. It seems nobody has the time to take a good look at a good map. Because then, anybody with the minimum of intelligence will see that Tibet is about the roof of the world, that it is about the source of all the major rivers of Asia. And we have been hearing the Chinese themselves say this, that China is dumping chemical and nuclear waste. This is not something that I'm making up. In the mid-80s, when communist China was desperately trying to re-enter the international market, they were really short of foreign exchange. And they announced that they had discovered more than 50% of the then world's known uranium resources and they were trying to peddle uranium at cheaper than international prices. But uranium, as we all know, is a sensitive material. And countries who buy these are the rich, powerful nations. A few dollars here and there was not attractive enough. Then China made another offer, which even rich, powerful Western nations found it hard to refuse. 
China offered that any country buying uranium from China and China had announced that they had discovered more than 50% of the world's known uranium resources in Tibet. They would not only get uranium cheaper than the international market, as we have just said, not much of a big deal, but China would take back the waste arising from the quantity of uranium bought from the Chinese. And where would the waste go? They said back into Tibet. That's where the uranium came from in the first place. And I assure you, they have not been following the strictest international standards in burying the nuclear waste. This untreated nuclear and chemical waste they have carelessly dumped in the wastelands of Tibet, where, again, the fear is that Tibet is still seismologically active. God forbid. I hope I'm wrong. But if one major earthquake should result in any of these major rivers flowing from Tibet being contaminated with the untreated nuclear and chemical waste, the consequences are too terrible to contemplate. And then finally, there is one other most important development. Just recently, China boastfully announced that they would dam and divert the Brahmaputra. But more than that, what they have completed is the construction of the so-called Three Gorges Dam, where now that the construction is completed, the reservoir will start filling up. When the reservoir has completely filled up, it will create the biggest artificial inland sea. But this huge body of water, in combination with the dozens of other dams they have in that area, and more so because of the rampant deforestation, the reckless mining, and also now in combination with the global warming up, all of these factors may contribute to the temperature of the Tibetan plateau being altered enough to affect the timely flow of the monsoon winds and this the consequences of affecting all the people of South and Southeast Asia could well trigger the next great war. So to that extent once again Tibet is about the truth of the world. Tibet is not just about Tibetans. People who care about truth and justice. People who are on the side of weak against the strong, the few against the many. Somehow, somebody, somewhere must find the courage to support the struggle of the Tibetan people to regain our homeland for the sake of world peace, for the sake of truth and justice. Thank you.